Sheldon, we're in person. <laughs> we are. If we're in person, sitting on my couch, it means only one thing. What's it mean, Sheldon? It means that we have a special guest. That's right. We got Marie Rhoda back on the podcast. Not going to lie, the timing was very difficult for you on a personal level, missing out on the NBA. Yeah. The start of the NBA season. Yep. But also, we knew that we had to time it for this episode because we knew in our heart of hearts, we saw how things were lining up at the end of last episode. We had to get Marie on. We knew it was going to be a big episode. A big Marie or a Cara Marie episode. Hashtag Cara Marie. Yes. Uh, we always forget to introduce ourselves. I'm John Shidley Hill. And I am, once again, Sheldon Alexander. Once again and always. Yeah. Uh, and this is You Killed It, the podcast about the challenge, a special episode with Marie Rhoda. You're going to hear her lovely voice after the music bumper. And it's funny, too, because if you're watching the video, you'll notice that I wasn't recording for the very beginning of the video. Were you not? Oh. So I'll just have a picture up with the audio. That's fine. That's all cool. the same. We, we had some it technical funny, difficulties. Though. We also had our microphone drop. No, no, like, no. Uh, you know what was really funny, though? At one point, so interview starts, I, like, I had this whole thing about how, like, whatever. You'll see it. Or you'll hear it, I guess. But midway through, I just look over, and I'm like, oh, I'm not even rolling yet. What a moron. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the cover- the internal dialogue while Marie talking. I'm like, But it was, like, five minutes in. It wasn't okay, like that. Okay, okay. And it's fine. Like, you'll still hear it. It, it, we editing will make a difference. Yeah, 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 definitely. We we run a tight ship here on you, killed it, <laughs> right? Something like that. We'll get back to you after the bumper when we have Marie back on the line with us. What a perfect night to get you guys on, huh? I think you timed it out well. You timed it out well, definitely. <laughs> How are you? How do you like? I'm great. How are you guys? Good, good, good. Uh, it's hoodie season in Toronto, so it's a little chilly, but I'm okay. Yeah, over here, I actually kind of love it, though. Me too, I love the cold. I'm not mad at the fall. I'm not mad at it. Once the hoodies get out, I'm okay. But getting yeah. over summer's tough. Can't lie. Sheldon's just excited to be wearing his OVO hoodie. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> It's laundry day. That's all. Well, Marie, let's get down to some questions because I've got a ton. I know Sheldon has a ton. Yay! Um, <laughs> first off, first off, first off, Marie, I'm going to be honest with you. There's very few people that I would give up the first night of the NBA season for, but you are one of them. So I'm glad that you're on joining us tonight to discuss. The challenge. Thank you for coming on. Oh, my God. Thank you for having me. I love talking to you guys about this stuff. Oh, thanks, Marie. <laughs> um, I, I think we should start with tonight's episode. and Because there's a lot of like behind-the-scenes details <laughs> that we were hoping that you could help us out with. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> the first is, um, when you guys were going through that maze, um, Meet You in the Middle... How how did production do that crazy camera angle when you're like busting through things? It looked like you guys are holding GoPros, but you weren't, were you? We were holding GoPros after the fact, though. Oh, so they made you go back yeah, of course, through it? Of course, they showed Carl like strolling through there, like she throws down a million walls. <laughs> <laughs> of course. How hard was it? It's, uh, I mean, I want to say it's the most. <laughs> focused we've seen you in a in a competition but you're in two competitions for this episode so that's not really true but how hard was uh meet you in the middle honestly it was it was really hard and when me and Cara had first thought um we really couldn't tell what the game was we were hoping that considering it was going to be a girl girl first girl guy first girl or guy guy you know regardless like we're still going to be a disadvantage that maybe there was a puzzle in there or something. Yeah. But no, I mean, every, everything was exactly the same for us as it was for them. Um, the only thing I think that was different was they were told not to use their feet. Oh. Oh. But you guys could use your feet. Yeah. Okay. Interesting, interesting. Okay, okay. Uh, I have a bigger, like, overarching question about this season. So it's been a, it's been a really 
from a viewer standpoint, Marie, it's been interesting to kind of watch the bromance or whatever the female equivalent is to a bromance forming between you and Kara, right? Like we've had you on before. We obviously know the relationship that you guys have had on past seasons, but to watch it now, it's amazing to watch, but I kind of want to know what was the turning point? Like when, when did you first sort of start to get the feels like, oh, she's kind of cool or she's not as bad as I thought. When did that happen? Well, I think it was a lot more on my part than it was a current. <laughs> um, I mean, <laughs> I made a lot of effort to like yeah. humanize myself to her, explain to her that like, listen, I might have felt a certain type of way in the past, but like, I'm open to understanding people. You know, I'm not someone that just closes people off. Yeah. Um, and it was weird because they showed us go from like hating each other and being my own, my overall, calling her Howard for a story to laying with her himself. You know, so. There was definitely a conversation, a multiple conversations that helped between them, whether it was about her and Kyle and me just being kind of supportive about the whole situation because at the end of the day, like, I mean, who hasn't been through a bad breakup before? Yeah. And to deal with that, like, that's that's crushing. You know, and I know that she wants to be like this warrior chick, but I know at the end of the day, she's still the car that she was on Fresh Meat. You know, she's sensitive and she's probably more insecure than ever because, <laughs> you know... <laughs> When you're at the top, you're at the top. People expect things from you. Yeah. Whereas me, it's like if I was in elimination, well, so, yeah. took me a little while. <laughs> so I get her, and you know, especially with everyone being so mean to her, and me just not, I'm just never that person in general. Um, I really kind of brought us together, and I mean, we have the entire house against us, and listen, when you have a full house of people against you, it, it definitely <laughs> puts you in a corner together. So. What was it like for you kind of watching her go through the whole Kyle thing at the start of this season? I don't know how, how much you paid attention to us and what we were talking about, but we were super annoyed just about how much it was dragged on, the mm -hmm. whole Kara and Kyle and Polly saga early on. So I can only imagine what it was like to witness <laughs> it, but also have your partner be involved in it. So what was that like oh from your perspective gosh. watching that? And it was so frustrating. You guys don't even, they don't even have to show the end of it. Like, after we had um, put our vote on Kyle and Brad, mm -hmm. that was a huge situation for us the entire rest of the season. Oh. Like, the second that they would get power, like, we were on the chopping block, and they don't even show that. Oh, uh, okay. That's always yeah. one of the, the interesting parts, right? Like, because we know at this point that there's the show that we see, but we also know that so much ends up on the cutting room floor for whatever reason, right? But what was that like? What was the, the turning point for you in terms of, okay, Kara is someone that I, I need to be able to work with because there's a million dollars on the line, but also maybe did you did you start to see like more positive a more positive side to her? Did that make it easier for you? Oh, for sure. I mean, listen, I told her from the beginning, the second that we found out that we were partners, I'm like, I'm going to make you my best friend. <laughs> it's very, very hard not to like me, Kara. Like, I'm going to break down the walls eventually. Yeah. Um, which, in the, which I did. Um, but you, you never want to see anyone go through that, especially a national television, especially someone who does consider herself a role model. You know, she's stronger than that. Yeah. And me, I'm all, I'm all pumped to have Kara Maria as my partner. I think, I'm, you know, it's going to be a breeze. And it was probably one of the hardest challenges I've ever taken part in. Yeah. Just because she wasn't there mentally, but also, like, I just... I, like when we went out at night, I would honestly watch how much alcohol I took in because I knew that Cara was very uncool in the eyes of the rest of the house. Okay. And if I lost my cool, like I guess I did last episode, <laughs> I would be fresh. So clearly, I was right with that sentiment. <laughs> was there a particular moment where Cara sort of turned the corner and got over Kyle? Because in tonight's episode, she talked about when. You guys got into the redemption house briefly, it seemed like, for just the night. But she said that like, they, when she saw Kyle in redemption, the feelings were gone. She, he was just a loser. She was more excited to see Polly. But was from your perspective, was there a point where like Kara flipped a switch and it was game mode? Or um, did it just sort of sneak up on you? I think, honestly, up until... Tonight, when all that stuff went down in the elimination, like she was still kind of, you know, involved in his mind games. She, regardless of what she says and if she has feelings for Polly, like and she definitely still has feelings for Kyle. And the, the guy's a schmooze. You know? <laughs> he, 
he knows how to get over on people. So. And I you, have you, to, can only, you can only pull someone off the balcony all of a sudden you know, before you're just like, all right, you know what? You keep doing you, like, I'm over it. That's it. <laughs> I also have to ask, do you feel like you dodged a bullet? Because I know that when you first met Kyle, there was some attraction, there were some sparks. Uh, oh, yeah. Then, then you uh, both moved on. Are you? Do you feel like you dodged a bullet there, that you missed the train? <laughs> I think I was the actual bullet in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> well played, well played, well played. <laughs> what was this season like for you so far? Just because there were, obviously everyone's with Vendettas, but there are different levels to the Vendettas, right? And on top of that, your partner is more aligned with the other side a lot more than, let's say, Sylvia and Joss, right? So how difficult was it for you to deal with this season when not only are you dealing with your partner, but now you have to deal with the fact that your partner's cool with the other side, but your side of the house, the lavender ladies, <laughs> are not so much down with Kara and Johnny and company. Yeah. How difficult was that for you to navigate? I mean, there's that, and there's also the thought that we're through the last couple of girls left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like, at the end of the day, people do want to make it as far as possible, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And obviously, you know, you would, in any other game, you would want to keep me and Carr around to the very, very end. Yes. Because, essentially, we're, we're that way up, you know? Mm -hmm. But here, it was kind of like, if somebody gets put in, you know, and we're one of those votes, they're going to come after us. Yeah. yeah, that was the part I didn't understand. I was oh. saying that last week on our pod, too. I was just like, I don't get why you'd want, let's say, Corey and uh, Devin to come in, and all of a sudden they're cool. And everyone's just like, yeah, they're in, they can stay. And like, normally, I feel like in past seasons, it would have been, okay, you guys just came in. Yeah, you guys got to go into the elimination right another elimination right away. Like, it just seemed weird that... Yep you'd want to keep these strong teams around. Like, I didn't really understand that. So was it a lack in strategy from Shane? Is Shane the ringleader of the other side? Is that what's going on? No, no, no. I'm the ringleader. So let's, let's back up to Q both. Okay. okay. I'm in. I'm in. So at this point, I, you know, I, I hate that, you know, people tweet at me and they'll be like, the Lavender ladies are just using you and, and you need to go away from them. No, I don't. I need to be as close to them as possible, knowing everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. Right? So, that episode when they had, you know, the tie vote between Johnny and Ashton Hunter, that wasn't Johnny's doing. So, basically, what had happened was that Ashton Hunter and Sophie Josh both wanted to go after me and Carla. Mm -hmm. But Shane didn't want to throw his vote there. Right? So, I knew those votes weren't aligned. And then on the other side, I knew that the three of our teams decided, okay, we're going to join this together. I wanted to be three votes. Now, Hunter and Ashley straight up told me that if they get picked, they're bringing me and Carl. Oh. Right? So now, if we vote three and they vote two, Ashley and Hunter are going in, so am I. So what I did was I told the plan to Ashley that we were all coming after her. Uh. And knowing that Ashley was, Ashley was apparently Pam, mm -hmm. you know, and they like to swap together and to freak out and make sure everyone voted the same way. And for me, personally, I felt more comfortable having a 50% chance of going in, knowing that's going to come down to a Zach or 100% yeah. chance if it was to go Ashton Hunter. I gotcha. I gotcha. The other thing, too, was just a there, No, sorry. Yeah. No, I was going to go on to the next one, but hmm. what were you saying? No, no, no. Go on. Go on. Okay. So now next episode. Last episode. And then it's like, why is Marie following Sylvia around the house? Yeah, 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 all this stuff, right? So Sylvia and I went into, I mean, you guys know you interviewed us together. Yeah. <laughs> we went into that very, very good time. In fact, to the point where, you know, when we were trying to figure out who's going on this season, we were asking out, you know, which one of the latter ladies are going. She was like, I don't know, I just talked to you guys. But that's how tight we were. Okay. You know, so when I was put in that situation, yeah, of course I knew that was going to happen eventually. I was surprised I made it as far as I did without it having happened already. You know, but for me, it wasn't an LL game anymore after Devin and Corey came in. It was a TYB game, right? Because uh, okay. the connection that Corey, Nelson, and Hunter have to, to each other are way bigger 
and Johnson Sobeer. Now, Johnson Sobeer owns a lot of them that throw the ball. Interesting. Right? But do they know that? Yeah. It doesn't seem like Sylvia knows well, that, though. But this is why, no, she doesn't know that because she wouldn't give me a minute to seat there. Uh. That's why I was so frustrated. I was following her out. So I was like, listen, like, you don't have to take what I'm putting out there. She's the reason. But you're my friend. Like, at least hear me out. Yeah. This is, like, in benefit of you, too. And that's the reason why Johnny and Tony actually voted for Ashley Hunter. I gotcha. Okay. Makes sense. I have to say, yeah, as a, like there's a whole back plan behind this. <laughs> I gotta say, as a viewer, the politics of this season are so confusing. Like on the surface, it's straightforward. It's Johnny Bananas and his alliance versus the Lavender Ladies and Team Young Bucks. But at the <laughs> same time, you also can tell that it's way more complicated than that. And like, I really appreciate you explaining things a little bit more because it was, especially with the Amanda and Zach, I, I guess you could call it a move when Zach stepped off the podium and like put them in. It, it's yeah. been very confusing to understand all the different <laughs> like possibilities and discussions and, and they haven't really shown a lot of the background discussions, I guess. I think it's maybe, maybe I just didn't do a good job talking about them in my interview. I don't know. But they really don't like to give me any kind of intelligent credit. But <laughs> even with like Cam, even with Cam's plan, right? Cam's yeah. plan worked out. Cam's yeah, plan yeah. to to protect Kyle and the original husband to protect Sylvia, perfect, purpose, right? But if any of the other votes fell any other way, one of our allies was going in. Mm-hmm. It was me on the back end who was able to speak to everyone to kind of align it up that way. Mm-hmm. I gotcha. How long did it take, like, because this was a new twist and a completely different twist in terms of the voting process, and, of course, if you vote for someone, you got to be prepared to take them out yourself. How difficult mm-hmm. was it, and how long did it take for you guys to figure out sort of the strategy to it each week? Because it kind of was changing, no? Well, we figured, yeah, it was always changing depending on the numbers in the house. But for the most part, people were confident enough to speak to each other. And for instance, I was tied up with Doc, who was Amanda's partner, to explain to him like the, like how the votes are going. Mm-hmm. That way he can go at least tell that to Johnny and then we all go on the same board. Yeah. Because there are times that where we would force tie votes yeah. just to be like, okay, what's going to happen now? Yeah. To see what's you know, happening. Like yeah, if, yeah. if there's only one vote from the power team and that's the one that's winning, you know, what's going to happen then? And like we would learn that way. I gotcha. From the viewer's perspective, it seemed like, especially the first, like, five or six episodes of the season, it seemed like there was a lot of house drama. Like, obviously, the Kara, Polly, Kyle situation, but also all the hooking up and everything. But from what you're telling us, it sounds like there's a lot of political talk that we just haven't seen. How does this rate compare to previous seasons that you've been on? in terms of the amount of politics that you've had to work and others had to work in the house? Oh my god, it was, it was all day, every day. <laughs> like, even, when, even when Devin and Corey came in, Devin and Corey both had their headset on winning this challenge. <clears throat> yeah. So behind the scenes, they were even willing to work with us on that last vote as well. But we needed buy-in from Sylvia because she ran the team. So if Sylvia's not going to okay, you know, changing the votes, we all can't go that way. I gotcha. Do you, do you think it's fair that these, like, super strong teams get a chance to come in, what, halfway through, more than halfway through the season, and they have the same opportunity as you do to win a million dollars? Absolutely not. <laughs> we're, like, we're, like, six weeks in. We're losing our minds. Again. Yeah. You know, it's not even about just, like, working out and whatever else, which I mean, we're eating the same thing every single day, the same buffet-style chicken, like, bland, whatever, that's enough to make you go crazy alone. Yeah. But, like, we've been in it. Like, we've been politicking, we've been backstabbing people this whole time, and we're just going to walk in and, like, put your head down. Also, people are getting hurt. I'm sorry? I said, also, people are getting hurt as well, right? Like, it just, yeah. even physically, it's not fair. Yeah. I mean, is there anything about this? Challenge there, like listen, yeah. <laughs> huge feminist, huge feminist over here. Okay, yeah. but how yes, were two girl girls gonna beat two guy guys in some of those challenges just based on size alone? 
The I'm elimination tonight. Oh. I mean, don't don't even count the maze one, the ball one. Yeah. yeah. There was no equalizer on that. Natalie almost died. Like so, I was screaming at production. I was going to ask you about that, like, because watching it, it seemed horrible, right? Like, she's just spinning, and luckily Kyle just appeared to gas out. But at any point, was production about to step in? Uh, I think I honestly was, like, freaking out so much, because I had just been in that ball, so I knew it was like, and I wasn't being tall like Natalie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we were just, like, every, like, second where, like, the ball would roll, like, close to us, you'd be like, oh! <laughs> oh, like, yeah. I wanted, I wanted to, and I was like, stop, stop, and then like yelling at her, and she was like, oh. it, it was really, like, we had, a, we, we, both now, I don't know, now it was way more so, it was, like, uh, we had knee pads, and we had arm pads on, or whatever, um, whatever, elbow pads, and they literally flipped off within the first second of us being in there. I was going to ask, you were wearing knee pads? It didn't look like it. Yeah, Jeez, you wow. were all torn up. No, they came right off. Are you okay? Like, how long did it take, like, to recover? Because that looked pretty bad. Until the end of the time there, like, I think mean, for each of us, I was saying, uh, I think both Natalie and I, like, Alan, she never healed. Because every time they would, like, start healing, you know, we put our, our pants on or anything else on and just rip them open again. Yeah. yeah. Like, we both have scars. Yeah. Anytime you tried to get down on the dance floor in one of the club scenes or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm being an idiot. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you mentioned how um, important it was for uh, you guys to maintain the all-female teams in the main house. And that was really apparent when you guys got into Redemption uh, on tonight's episode that mm -hmm. it was almost immediate that you and Kara were talking to Kaylee and Cam and saying, like, hey, whoever draws the double cross, like, we're taking each other so that at least one all-woman team gets into the house. When you're yeah. in the house, how aware, like, is that, like, a running discussion about representing women well, or uh, yeah, was it just... You, I walked in the house, I gave, like, Cam and Kayla the eye, and, like, it was done. <laughs> like, it was with each other. That's it. But, but like, even when you're in the main house, were you guys talking about that? Maybe not, like, in terms of alliances, but just being aware of, like, hey, it's important to us as women to have a, a all-women team make the final and maybe win. Yeah, it's just, it's a lot harder in the main house because mm -hmm. people are so willing to go after the girl-girl team. Right. Because they are, similarly, like, the easier people beat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately. Like, <laughs> no offense, ladies. You can do it too, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was interesting just watching um, some of the other challenges as, a, as a, the time went along, but I guess my, my question here is, for you, if you were partnered with someone else, like I guess one of the other guys, who would you have wanted to be partnered with? Probably, uh, uh, that's a tough one. How would you work with, let's say, Nelson? Not me, Nelson, would never work. <laughs> 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 we'll never work. I knew that answer was coming. <laughs> Nelson would never work. 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 What about, like, bananas? Everyone seems to have beef with bananas, but... Bananas would be... Bananas is... Listen, at the end of the day, he is a cool person. That's why he's so annoying. Because, like, why, like, why do you have to make me hate you? <laughs> like, what I do? Like, what I do today, Johnny? Like, why are you gotta come at me for? Yeah. Are you supposed to fucking take the bro. You know. Yeah. So yeah, is he always kind of? Is he? Is he? What? Is it always a thing where you're kind of going back and forth between like, you're such a good guy. Why can't you just be like this all the time? But you kind of see the show or the act that's being put on. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, was it weird having Johnny cheer for you during eliminations? Dude, <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I talked about that in my, like, in my interviews. I'd be like, listen, I know that me and Johnny are an alliance by default here, mm -hmm. but... <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, it's not the worst thing in the world. Speaking of your uh, interviews and recaps, as uh, you might or might not know, John and I are, I'm doing air quotes for myself more than John, journalists, but uh, I'm doing air quotes for myself definitely as a journalist, but uh, you've been doing recaps during this season of The Challenge. What's that been like for you, kind of watching the show, but also watching it from a different angle because you kind of got to give your take on everything that's going on. What's that been like for you? Well, the really cool thing about that is the reason I was so excited to write for them is because they write in a particular type of tone and it's a type of tone that I relate to. Yeah. You know, not that serious, like, take things for what it is, whatever. So when I asked the guys the opportunity to write it, you know, they made sure to tell me that, that, you know, they do write it in a specific tone and yada, yada, yada. Um, but I, the recaps have been honestly, like, I think they've actually gained me a couple of new fans. You know, That's good. it's not like I'm just like going out there and saying that like I think a certain way or you know I could say something. But when you're actually able to put it down in words and make it seem intelligent and also <laughs> humorous, I, I think it sounds. <laughs> I think it says a lot about you. So you know, I, I love doing them. Uh, I know that you're in the Facebook. Uh, challenge fans group in fact you're the one that told us about it and that's why sheldon and i got in it have you noticed what a big shift it's been where suddenly you're becoming yeah, are everyone's you sorry are you kidding me are you kidding me I'm my just... life has changed completely <laughs> <laughs> like your mentions seem to be a bit more positive these days is that what you're saying yeah, all of a sudden I'm beautiful, I'm hilarious, you know, I can comment on shit without a million people, like, patting me. You know, <laughs> it's a whole different life out there. And you know what, like, I think that obviously having Cara as, as a partner, like, it's going to make her friends, like, come over to my side a little bit more, especially if we want to work together. But mm-hmm. on top of that, I feel like I'm finally getting the fucking edit that I deserve. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Getting that Johnny Bananas, uh, Cara Maria uh, edit, finally? Finally. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course they, like, won't show me doing anything smart, and I, I mean, I guess that's something that I'm just never going to get. i got to get it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a woman on the challenge. Like, we don't do that here. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm totally fine with being, like, the witty, like, one-liner here or there, like, creeping around the corner. Like, if you guys want to keep me there, I'm cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, knowing what I know, it's not going to stay there. So uh, this roller coaster of car and I is not about to uh, slow down. So... <laughs> I mean, it, it seems like people that follow you on social or follow Kara on social kind of might be aware that things might get a little bumpy soon. Uh, obviously not yeah. going to ask you about that because, you know, we understand. I'm sitting here waiting to watch it and see what happens. But <laughs> yeah. let's go back to, like, more happier times. Like, the whole Sylvia thing, okay, when that all went down. Kara... <laughs> You're, you're, you're laughing yeah. already. It's too funny. But the the Sylvia thing in terms of Kara, I'm just going to ask. They, it seemed that they were playing up a lot about Kara having your back in that instance, but it didn't really seem like she said or did much at all. Is that part of, like, the edit that we talk about all the time, that the Kara, <clears throat> excuse me, the Kara Maria uh, bananas edit that they get that's so positive? Because it seemed like there was this whole, like, oh, she had your back finally, but I didn't actually <laughs> see her do much. Am I wrong? No, she definitely didn't do much um, <laughs> at all. But, like, the, the thing about me is that, like, I don't want anyone to do anything. Okay. Like, if, if I have an issue, like, it's the same reason with, with Keela and Melissa. When they first got into the argument, Sylvia was holding Melissa back. You know, and w- what could have been just a little, like, you know, stupid, like, in-your-face kind of BS that we all do sometimes. Yeah. You know, really escalated because you're holding somebody back. Uh, you know, like, there's no reason for a bunch of people to jump in on something. Do, right. you, know, do you know every time I see that and in honestly, the... if Cara if Car tried to pull me in a week from her, I would have been pissed off the car, too, honestly. I was better in that type of mood, so. <laughs> <laughs> do you know every time I see that Melissa, uh, Kayla edit at the beginning of each episode, I'm always like, oh, yeah, I forgot that happened. Because it seems so long yeah, ago. A year ago? <laughs> it seems so long ago. But it going... really... It makes me sad, though, sometimes, because I feel like a lot of people complain about that. And I think, 
we could have definitely edited it a little bit differently to make things go faster. Mm -hmm. But there was also so much other juicy stuff that like they didn't even show. Like even in the redemption house tonight, what they showed. Yeah. Screen, you guys don't think I came in that house and lit shit up? <laughs> yeah. The second, find, the second that I saw Paul and fucking Kyle sitting in the corner together, you know what I stood up and was like, what the fuck is this? We <laughs> <laughs> don't show any of that. I I ran around that house with a fucking pool stick after a door, poking all of them, calling them. The, the giant word. Like, <laughs> don't know any of that. Well, if you've been listening to us, we've been having the same conversation just in the sense of like, what happened to keeping that same energy, right? Like, these guys were hold me back all stars. Everybody, you know, waiting for everyone to get in between them. They're swearing at each other. When I see you next, blah, blah, blah. And then they walk into the house and then, hey, man, what's up? Like, that's really, so they're well, just cool now? Like, that's what happened when you were there? Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, that's exactly why I said that to Sylvia. Like, I'll stand here all day and go nose to nose you. Like, we were going nose to nose with each other before that. Yeah. But, like, I know that we're both in this situation. If you want to make the move, by all means, go ahead. Because I have no out right now. I will take a headbutt over an elimination every single day. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately for myself, I didn't react. As yeah. quickly as I should have, because I should have milked that for everything. I should have fell on the floor. I should have cried, because... It's, if you see it, like, I'm, I'm almost setting myself up for it. You know, like, I'm pushing her while I'm saying, oh, I know what you're going to do. Yeah. You know, I'm the antagonist in that situation. Yeah. Are you and Sylvia cool now, or is there, are you guys, did you guys recover your friendship, or what's the situation? I don't think there was any kind of love loss. I think the situation where, like, if we're around something, we'll be fine and stuff like that. I, I definitely think that our relationship overall changes. I mean, listen. If you're my friend and you put your hands on me like that, like, I feel a certain type of way of you, of you moving forward, you mm -hmm. know? But, like, she's still a really cool girl and fun to party with. But that's the thing about these challenges. You know, there's so few people, there's a lot of people that I call my friends because when I get on the show, I like being out with them. You know, the laughter ladies, just fun. Mm -hmm. You know, I have the same sense of humor of them. I drink as much as them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but at the end of the day, outside of the show, there are that handful of people that, like, I text every single day, and I call every single day. And I'm sure they have that within them, but I'm just not part of it. Who uh, who from the Challenge House uh, would you be speaking to every day? Who are your besties in real life? Who are my besties? I mean, I speak to Kayla, Jenny every day, Kaylee. Um, I still talk to Shane here and there. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's about it. Listen, if I'm going into the Challenge House with my best friend, this is the person I am. Right, and, and Sylvia considered me one of her really good friends, but I have considered her at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, at least the conversation. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. That's my whole point. Uh, what about you and Shane? Because, I mean, at one point on the season, you said that he was your best friend in the house. And then, like, in tonight's episode, before the uh, Meet Me in the Middle competition... You guys are pretty salty, and he said he was going to light you up on Twitter, which is crazy because you're the queen of Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I was like, pick a different game, Shane. Pick a different game. <laughs> but, but are you guys cool now? Or are things back where they were? Or Yeah, we're as cool as we can be. It just, it just annoys me that, like, you know, during the season, like, he would come into our room and tell us how to be bullied by, like, the lavender ladies and that, like, they would oust him if he talked to me in car and all this other stuff, but then we'll, like, go grab hugs and I'm on Twitter. It's just like, come on, dude. Like, at the end of the day, I get, like, you have your own line. First and foremost, Shane, we literally live together in a room, just you and I. So, like, we build that relationship there alone, right? Mm -hmm. And then on top of it, I get that there's alliances. I understand that, right? But you have Corey and Devin who just walk in, so you put your vote there if you really want to go with, like, that whole, you know, you're not working with us thing. Even though I was, even when I wasn't, <laughs> voting with them, you know, like yeah. I was telling them where things were going so everyone would be safe. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know where, I think I just lost my train of thought with that <laughs> one, but, uh. <laughs> well, I'm curious about Devin and Corey's arrival in the house, because, I mean, I don't know if you heard on an earlier episode of You Killed It, Sheldon and I were talking about it, and I hypothesized that Devin is maybe the most popular person in the house because he seems kind of chill with everyone except for obviously Johnny but mm -hmm. even still I w I'm still not clear why 
they didn't get thrown in basically as soon as they walked in. Like, I know that they have the Young Bucks Alliance, but that's just Hunter and Nelson backing them up. Like, why? I guess I know you're yeah, trying to work yeah, Sylvia, Nelson. but... But you have to, that, listen, that, that's what we're going to actually see the all that. Yeah. If Hunter and Nelson don't want to vote for Corey, yeah. I agree. That's the only reason why we want to go into the girls. That's why, regardless of where the votes went that night, we were still going in. Because any one of those people was picking up. Unless maybe it was Corey and Devin and they wanted to, like, not be the diamonds. <laughs> but that wasn't happening. <laughs> Uh, am I right, though, that Devin's one of the most popular people in the house? Because he seems, he's been kind of quiet and low-key so far from what we've seen this season. Obviously, he was going through a rough time in his personal life, but he seems like he's yeah. on good terms with everyone, except Bananas. Yeah, Devin's not popular. <laughs> <laughs> he used a fun time. He's a fun time. He's, he's kind of like me, where, like, listen, I'm not a lot of the ladies. He's not just low-key. Like, he fits in with all of them. Yeah. I mean, everyone just, like, respects him a lot more than I do. Then they respect me because he just speaks a lot more intelligently sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, uh, someone who kind of doesn't, definitely doesn't fit in the, either of those groups, but is a very interesting character is Brad. Brad seemed to be laying low oh my God. for most of this season, or at least the edit that he was getting, until tonight. What happened that made him just pop off like that during that argument? Well, for the majority of the game, he spent just trying to calm down Kyle. Like, he had to be the level-headed one. Yeah. Whereas now, I mean, you saw in the house with the whole <laughs> talking shit and get the toilet paper. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I don't know where he got his material like, you from. Wanna, you want to talk about, like, cast reactions. Please, they, they need to have a fucking camera on Brad at all times. <laughs> do you know what I do want to like, know? Like, when Zach came in and they told him what happened, and Brad was just, like, the only person to shake his head, like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mentioned reactions. I want to know the real-time reaction when Zach says, all right, we're going in. What was your reaction in the moment when Zach just basically volunteered to go in? And also, was that something that was talked about beforehand? Or was everyone just kind of caught off guard? Well, okay, so, I mean, we knew that it was... We didn't know what the situation was going to be if they couldn't come to an agreement. Mm -hmm. Right? So, in that sense, we were just kind of, like, hoping that somehow Zach would be able to, like... Actually, I guess not, but we have to be Johnny for us to be safe. But regardless, um, oh, shit, what was I saying? God damn it, I always do this. What <laughs> happens to me, guys? It's all right, it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. It's just oh, like... In no, no, no. So it was one of those things where, as you mentioned earlier, right, that sometimes you guys know that it's going to be a tie, but you don't know what they're going to do after that. But while you guys are all standing yeah. there in that moment... And TJ says, if you guys don't come to a decision, you guys got to go in. What did you think was going to happen? I mean, we were all stressed out, but, like, <laughs> Zach was on a mission. <laughs> Zach was on a mission not to agree with Amanda. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even their conversation tonight, what was that? Yeah, like, that was super like she weird. Was, she was kind of willing to, you know, like, play their game, quote, unquote, but, like, even just make some kind of peace. Yeah, she appeared to at least be trying to at least make some kind of peace, and he was kind of just like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that Amanda has... You think that now Amanda has learned her lesson after the last couple of situations she's found herself in in these shows, so... Yeah. yeah. The, that Zach and Amanda fight, or disagreement, however you want to put it, for whatever reason, is one of like the most divisive debates I've seen amongst fans uh, of yeah. the challenge. Why do you think people are like so strongly behind either Zach or Amanda? Because it's either like you're either like supporting the LLs or you're supporting bananas. Like that's what comes down to. Like so, that's what it is. And at the end of the day, Amanda did have more allies in the house and more allies that she could actually beat long term. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I think that he was playing smart, he would be working with her. Hmm. That's but interesting. Even among fans, it seems like it... I mean, Amanda brought it up on Twitter, but it seems like there's kind of a, a gender dispute as well, where, uh, I mean, some people have said that Zach just can't work with uh, women. I know Laurel on Twitter also got into it, but then a lot of guys are like, no, you got to back Zach. Amanda's a pain in the ass. She's the worst person yeah. ever. People were yeah. had a campaign to have Amanda kicked off of the show. Like... Yeah. It's, yeah. it's been heated out there. Like, what do you think of all that? Notice. You know, we're getting on a call for challenge sheet and, like, make sure everyone fucking, like, tries to stand yeah. off. Like, <laughs> you guys want to give her any more free promo? Like, come on, dude. <laughs> what is your relationship yeah, they with the media? They did the exact same thing. They did the exact same thing. They're both stubborn. They both yes. had a ticket to that million dollars. It wasn't just Zach. Yeah. I totally they agree. Did. That's the point that Sheldon and I have been making. Like, they're both loyal to their alliances, for better or for worse. And, like, I, I don't know. I respect them both for just sticking to their guns. In that one instance. Like, forget stuff that happened before, stuff that happened after. They both stayed loyal to their friends. And, like, I don't know. I respect that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and listen, if you want to talk about them, like, actually working as a team and, like, speaking and, like, maybe coming to a decision together, that didn't even give her that opportunity. He walked down. Yeah. 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 No, that's fair. What is your relationship with um, Amanda? I love Amanda. I know that everyone hates her. I do not whatever. hate Amanda. I don't hate Amanda. I think she's hilarious. She is, honestly, one of the real people I've ever met off these shows. She is someone that is unapologetically in herself. She says things, and she says them in the moment she, when she's heated, like everybody else in this world. Yeah. But she doesn't, like, she doesn't necessarily take it back, you know? Like, she said it, she thinks she's funny, she has that sort of humor about her, doesn't take things too seriously. And I feel bad that she's getting the grunt of this because I think out of everyone, she was the person that I was able to kind of speak to uh, the most in terms of like being rational. Yeah. Um, I know that things have shifted in your favor um, this season, but how hard is it having like people blowing up your inbox either through Facebook or Twitter? Like, how hard is the social media aspect now of the challenge? Because five, ten years ago, this wasn't a thing, right? Like, when, when Johnny and Brad first, and CT and Veronica first, and Shane, for that matter, first started coming on the show, they didn't have to deal with the, like, everyday people tweeting at you, commenting on your Instagram posts, all that. How hard is it? It's, it's really hard, and I think that also reflects back in the way that we actually act towards each other. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, like, self like subconsciously, I think that we're all just really kind of hurt by the things that people say. Like, for me, for instance, like, the last couple of seasons that I've got so much heat, I'm sitting there, and I'm just like, I'm the most normal person on this cast. <laughs> like, I'm actually, I'm likable as hell, I'm fucking funny, you know, like, why does everyone hate me? You know, and I think that the car and I can kind of relate in that sense. Because she maybe had like that same sort of story, but she's too like stubborn to actually admit that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like. But, I mean, it's, it's definitely it changes everything. But I mean, that's the world that we live in. That's how we communicate. Like, if you text someone and they don't like text you back within like an hour, like, okay, guys, I don't care. I don't like to play these games with the boys who like don't answer you for five hours. You have your phone on you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, for sure. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. I'm also curious to... think all two seconds. Yeah. I, I am with you. I've been ghosted. I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got to ask, though, I know that a lot of fans are kind of over the Redemption House. I think fans like the Mercenary Twist, but the Redemption House seems to be drying out uh, this season. And even tonight, like, the two teams that got eliminated, they're not really out. Right? Like, they're yeah. still just in the redemption. How do you feel about the redemption house and people getting that chance to come back over and over and over again? Like, Polly and Adelie. I think that, unfortunately, to the viewers, the redemption house does seem a little bit dragged out. But in a game where you have these different gender teams and it's this weird voting system and all that stuff, I think it's the only way to make it somewhat fair. Okay. You know, and it's funny because, you know, everyone will say that, 
oh, it's such a long season. I hate drama. I hate this. But you know what? The second they cut, they cut the challenge back to half an hour, and it's just a freaking obstacle course. Like they'll be complaining about that too. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't win. Yeah. No, that's totally true. You know, the guys, if you want to, you want to go watch some kind of ninja warrior show. <laughs> there's a ninja warrior show. Yeah. You know, like. To get on the show, you had to come from like the real world or stuff like that. When I tried out, I wasn't lifting weights. Yeah. I was being myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, one. So, uh, go ahead. Well, I mean, like, you you always want to have people on the show that relate back to other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I personally like so. For instance, if I'm on Tinder, if I'm on a dating app, and I see and I come across a guy with a six pack. I know that we have nothing in common. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, this is never going to work out. So if you put uh, a bunch of six-packs on the show, I think it's going to be a pretty boring fun show. <laughs> yeah, that's totally fair. Totally interesting, yeah. I'm curious to know that uh, one rookie team that I think really impressed people this season was Jose and Davon. Mama Day in particular, I think, impressed people. I know she won me over. What did you think of those oh, two? Yeah. I love them both so much. I think they bring so much energy to the show. I mean, who beats Devon's interviews? Like, nobody. <laughs> yeah. Like, she just brings fire, and, like, you, like, wake up when she comes back on the screen. Yeah. You know, so we actually have, like, a kind of rough start. Yeah, <laughs> fair. We got to do a little bit of a truffle. <laughs> uh, but, you know, especially with their guys now, I mean, I was thinking about the other day, right? Like, they couldn't have ever thought that me and Connor were going to make it this far. Right? <laughs> yeah. So if you have their attention, like, they, they did not think that. Like, I remember every interview I sat down, they'd be like, so uh, have you ever been this far before? And I was like, yeah, well, well, I was like, that was the season, they made it almost to the final, so you can relax with that. But also, <laughs> like, I'm surprised too, I know, you know? <laughs> the redemption house, it would be really interesting, like, for instance, what if me and Connor were Paulie and Natalie in the redemption house? Like, would we have that relationship that we have now? Yeah. The one of actually fighting together? I don't know. No, that's interesting. What I was going to ask you, too, because you have, obviously, the experience of being in both houses uh, this season. How different is the schedule in terms of shooting from being in the Redemption House and being in the Normal House? Obviously, there's more stuff going on in Normal House, but what is happening in the Redemption House when we're not... When there's not cameras rolling, do you know what I mean? Because you're not doing challenges, yeah, yeah. you're not doing whatever. Just compare the two for me. What do you think? Well, so me and Carl actually got into that resort. We were the last ones to go in, so we were only there for about two days. Mm-hmm. But everybody else that was there, they were literally just chilling for like <laughs> two weeks, just chilling. Yeah. There was beer during the day, you know, like it was a, a super light. <laughs> I was excited to come into redemption. I was like, party here. I just be lying to the friends, grab the beer. <laughs> yeah. So it's good times. Good times. The Redemption House yeah. is almost more so like the real world house or something like that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, I know I brought this up earlier before, but I'm super interested all the time in how they decide when you guys get to go out and how they film it and set that up. Like, are they forcing you to have certain conversations while you're at the club, or is that just something that's naturally happening? No, there's nothing forced to like be done ever, like okay. when we go out or any situations that occur. But like for instance, the night that I was getting loaded in, I was pissed off. Yeah, yeah. You know what I don't like to do when I'm pissed off? Go out and hang around with a bunch of people that I'm pissed off at. Makes you sense. Know, totally makes sense. I just wanted to be in a corner the whole night. But yeah. then you have people coming up to you and talking. That was when I blew up on Ashley. I was just like, leave me alone. <laughs> Stop talking to me. <laughs> you know, and then she wants to bring out the corner line, like, well, this is a challenge, and you've got to go this to be a winner. So, okay. Turn the corner to everybody. Like, let's go. <laughs> so we talked a bit about, you know, the partying and having fun and doing all that stuff. And obviously, Marie, one of the reasons why – uh, I like you so much on the show is because you do see more so like the normal, like a normal regular person, right? That we could hang out and have a beer with, whatever. But on this yeah, season, sure. on this season, I'll say you stepped your game up challenge wise as well, right? Like not only this elimination that we just saw, but even last episode where 
you were on the tower and you guys had to like scale it down the tower and you beat Kara coming down. I'm not sure many people would have predicted that happening, but you've definitely made huge strides in terms of your challenge game. How has that happened and how has that transition occurred for you? Well, you know, there is a lot of pressure when you are the top female uh, face of the challenge, Kara. Mm -hmm. But there's even more pressure when you are that person's partner. Because I knew no matter what I did, whether we came in last place, second place, or even first place, yeah. it was somehow going to be my fault. Regardless. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I'm trying to come back into a house and really show people, like, that I'm, I'm not just, like, a, a big jokester and all of that other stuff, especially when I'm in a team scenario, like, I really give it everything because, you know, it's for the team. Like, when, yeah. when I'm by myself, it's kind of like, all right, I'm a realist, like, yeah, I'm not going to be able to jog a million miles like this person, but it's fixed, you know, you're connected to somebody. So, you know, I, I really wanted to prove a lot of people wrong this season. Fortunately, I feel like, you know, yeah, I'm still not this full. They'll still say that, like, Carr is better than me or whatever and whatnot, and, and I'm fine with that. Yeah. But I, I feel like I, I just proved overall to in, in different ways, not only just, like, my abilities, but also just, like, my personality that, like, I'm not what people have made me out to be. Hey, and as, as two guys who are on your side from the get-go, it's been amazing to watch this season. I'll say that much. That's been fun. It's definitely fun to watch yeah. that go down. Um, the one thing I was, I was super curious about as well is you've done it when you've been on with us before, you've given us kind of maybe stories. You know, they, they always had the shit they should have shown for like real yeah. worlds or whatever. Give us maybe a story or two that you're able to share that hasn't been on this season, but you thought was hilarious or funny or something they definitely should have shown. Okay, well, the me and Devon fight was hilarious. So basically, they come in the house, Big Brother team, and they're doing that whole, like, fly on the wall shit. You know, yeah. they're like, they're not really talking to us, but they're kind of lurking around us. They're, yeah. like, not speaking to each other either. They're just, like, giving each other, like, eye signals. <laughs> you know? And, like, you know when you catch people, like, giving eye signals to each other, and you're just like, I'm watching you. Oh, yeah. Like, I know what you're doing. You know, so we were in our bedroom downstairs, and I was sitting at the top of the, like, by the pillows with my back to the backboard. I'm looking at the like the end of the bed. And Devon's at the end of the bed with her back towards me. And Carter's doing something weird with the boa again, like just being a freaking weirdo. <laughs> right? And Josie and Devon, Josie and Devon look at and look at each other, and they like roll like their eyes at each other, like she's a loser, you know, whatever. And I was just like, <laughs> I was like, if you roll your eyes again at me, I swear to God. Like, <laughs> They're not even looking at me. Yeah. Right? So, like, they run turns around, and she's like, what? No, she's ferocious, but she's searching me out. I was like, uh-oh. Uh -huh. But at this point, I'm wearing, like, white high-top jeans and, like, a sequined, like, bedazzled shirt, right? And we're, like, <laughs> screaming at each other. And I'm like, you don't even blink when you talk. Some stupid argument, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and she... <laughs> And she was just like, I can't even take you seriously in your Selena top. And she nailed it. I was literally dressed like Selena. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Selena's a legend. <laughs> I like, laughed like, on that note. <laughs> I got to ask, when you had that fight, was there pizza nearby? Because there's something about pizza that seems to get your blood boiling, Marie. <laughs> right? Right? Well, well, there, there could have been, honestly. There honestly could have been. <laughs> That's it's amazing. not McDonald's, maybe. I don't know. I don't get it. Don't bring it to the house. Um, they also didn't show me talk to Ashley, and talk to Ashley pretty hard. I did see you guys talking about that on Twitter. That night, Yeah. when, when shit went down that night, um, I felt, on, our, on that episode of our podcast, I felt that there were a lot of things edited out. Not only just that, that part that you guys mentioned of you shoving Ashley, which might have been something that I wanted to see. But I just felt like the way that it was put together on TV, it looked like there was a huge gap. Do you know what I mean? There like was it, a huge gap. And it, it just seemed like super obvious. So what did we miss? So the whole night and also like just throughout the entire season, I think they just like would do like – little mean girl stuff, like say things that like are under their breath but everyone can hear them, you know, roll their eyes over and she says she's annoying, annoying shit. Mm -hmm. um, and they kept pushing her all night, pushing her all night. And then like eventually like 
I got, I think, the, well, this is what I'm told, I don't know. I remember I got to Kyle's bed, because I was so cool with everyone, so I got to his bed, his bunk bed, he wasn't in it, and I was like, you're not bringing anyone here, like, no more of this, you know, <laughs> I remember his days and they actually came in, and then everyone was just like, Kyle, like, Louise and Kyle's bed, I'm like, really guys, like, you have to be the one like that, then I went out having a conversation with Carl outside, I was just like trying to calm him down, and be like, listen, like, not a big deal, like, fuck these bitches, like, whatever, <laughs> just calm down, and we're sitting there, we're talking, we're just having a one-on-one. I don't even know if the cat was there. And Josh, when he gets drunk, he's like a little child. Like, he's a little boy. Like, skips around. <laughs> you know, and he's upstairs on the balcony, and he poured water on her head. And oh. I 100% think it was, was never intentionally meant to, like, be anything mean or anything like that. It was just bad timing. Okay. Like, at that point, all the girls were, like, crawling into bed. Like, the fight had been over. Mm. You know, and that just, like, fueled the fire. And I honestly just put the car, and I was like, go. Like, I got your bad, just go. <laughs> like, you know, at wow. that point, like, I would have just been, like, poof, wild. So did the cameras miss that? Is that what happened? Yeah, probably. Ah, okay. Or, I mean, they, they, can only fit, they can only fit so much, you know, but, like... For sure. I think it, it did kind of look weird how, like, cars just stormed in, like, randomly, you know? Yeah. <laughs> of, that was a great episode, though. Great episode. Of, yeah. Of all the uh, challenge seasons you've been on, how does this rate for you, like, in terms of how much fun you had? Is it the most fun you've had, the least fun? Like, how does it rate for you? Um, I had a really, really great time this season. I mean, this sounds really corny, um, but the, the moment between Cara and I was honestly one of my favorite moments like of any challenge that I ever did. Aww. It was like just such like a back against the wall, like genuine moment. And for it to be captured is just like, it's just sweet to watch, you know? And it brings you back to a spot where like you remember, like, cause me and Connor, let me, this entire season, like we see, I see shit that she says because listen, at the end of the day, like I'm cool with Connor, I understand him now. But that doesn't mean I have to agree with how she acts and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and I, and I don't. Like the same things that was upset before about her, she still does, they still upset me. But I'm just, I, I just understand her differently now as to, like, why she might react that way. So, yeah. I, I do a have... Big, uh, eye opener. I was going to say, so that moment was legit, you guys, when you're having the, the uh, deliberation there? That moment was legit where you guys are bonding or... I don't know the, the right word. Yeah, bonding is the right word. Yeah. That was, ten, that was like, 10,000% legit, Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, neither of us are good actresses. <laughs> 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 I wear my face, like, my sleeve on my face, but other people call it, like, all the time. So like, it caught you, you off. Know how I'm feeling. <laughs> it, it actually caught you off guard. It's like, oh, you're my friend. That was a good yeah. moment. I, I was like, oh, shocked. Like, so happy. <laughs> and, and, and it's funny because, like, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, Connor's finally speaking up. Like, oh, you know, she's, like, being a little bit more humorous and stuff like that. And, like, behind the scenes, you know, Carla gives me credit. Mm-hmm. She's mm-hmm. like, you know, thanks for like bringing bringing that out of me. So that's I'm good. Gonna pat myself on the back for that. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> I have um, yeah. a couple of listener questions. Um, cool. One is from uh, Raven Ramsey, who wants you to define the word corny. <laughs> What what do you mean when you say that someone's corny or corny as fuck? I love that, by the way. All right, Kyle and Polly <laughs> having the beast that we did, coming into the house, sitting on each other's lap. That's corny. <laughs> yep, cosine, huge cosine. But, but they, they, you know what? Corny to me is just like when you're just, when you're just not being what you're trying to be. Okay. You know, I'll accept anyone. I don't care who you are. Like, what you do, if I think you're weird, that's fine. Could you own it? Yeah. Like, I think that's so much cooler. For sure. <laughs> but if you try to be something that you're not, that's corny. Um, the second question is from Allie Love. Uh, I think the very first time we had you on You Killed It, she asked me to tell you this, but she wants you to know that she loves you and that you're her favorite. And, yeah, I and <laughs> she, she's a day one as well. She didn't just jump ship during Final Reckoning. She's always been Team Marie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and she wants to know 
the hashtag Kara Marie. We saw in yeah. tonight's episode that you finally got Kara to actually say it. How long yeah. was that in development, and how long did you have to work on Kara to agree to that very clever hashtag? Every single challenge that we went to, every single OTF that we had, at the end, I was like, hashtag Kara Marie. And she was like, uh, uh. So, like, it was going on the entire season. That's why, like, that moment between us after one, when I was like, what do I want to say? You know, like, <laughs> she, never, she knew exactly what I was fishing for. <laughs> No, nah, that's cool. That's totally cool. Uh, feels good to win a guys. Let me tell you. I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. Uh, Marie, we just want to thank you so much for coming on and speaking to us after what was a huge episode for you. And I think this has really been, this season has been your coming out party between winning an elimination, your articles on Batches, um turning the corner with Cara Maria and just becoming a fan favorite. I think it's been a huge oh season God. for you and it's been so great to have you back on You Killed It. We really appreciate all that you've done for us, both on air and off air, on Twitter, the conversations we have behind the scenes. It's, we, it means so much to us. It makes a huge difference for us. Well, you guys are awesome. I love how you always kind of like dive into the episodes and actually kind of think behind what you're not saying. So that's pretty cool. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate it. We put a lot of thought into it. Believe me. <laughs> we think too much about the challenge. <laughs> um, you and me both. <laughs> but at least you get paid to be thinking about it. <laughs> uh, <hurry. laughs> not anymore, though. <laughs> fair. True. Fair. I am glad you didn't get too big time for us, you know? So that's cool. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> anytime, guys. Anytime. Thanks so much, Marie. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Good Bye luck on the rest of the season. Woo! I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs> well, that was amazing. Yeah, Marie's awesome. I I'm never disappointed whenever we get a chance to talk to Marie. And as I mentioned to her, as big time as she's gotten this season, you know, her fame from this season, I'm glad she didn't forget about the little guys, right? So. I'm happy she still came on and made time for us, especially right after the episode, right? Where, you know, for a lot of these people that are on the show, they're engaging with the fans yeah. as the show's going on. And she was doing something on Facebook Live, I'm pretty sure, or on she the was. Challenge Facebook yep. group earlier. So, yeah, she was able to carve out some time for us. Greatly appreciated. And she was awesome, as always. Behind the scenes stories, giving us a little insight on the whole. Uh, Beef turned bromance with Cara Maria. We need to come up with a term for lady bromance. I think listeners, one of our listeners have one. For listeners, sure. help us out. Try not to make it too crass because I'd like to make it into a hashtag. But if you can find like a, an equivalent of there bromance, there has to be one. We're just not thinking about it. I, you know what it is? It's that we're recording at night and normally we record it in the morning. Okay. And I'm dumber at night. Like, for <laughs> sure. A hundred percent. I get stupid uh, when the sun sets. I'm just dumb all the time, so I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got nothing. You made uh, me laugh so hard I coughed. Uh, um, I have to ask you, though, Sheldon. Who killed it for you this week? It's obviously Marie. Yeah, she came on the podcast. That's an uh, that's an easy way to get the you killed it award for me. Come on the podcast. We're just brutal homers, but but but, <laughs> but I will say she did have a really good episode. She I did. Mean, if you think about how difficult that challenge was, yeah. obviously Natalie, great job by Natalie. But I think that is honestly more of a detriment towards Kyle and. Uh, Brad. Like, yeah. I think Kyle just gassed out, and it was that's a terrible loss for Kyle and Brad. That's a bad loss. Bad loss. And, you know, mind you, credit where credit's due. Shout out to Natalie. Great job. Yeah. But uh, the way that Kara and Marie were able to just, you know, get back in the game with the, their backs against the wall, the odds against them. Yep. Uh, Marie, as I mentioned to her, and it's not just hyperbole. I really think she did do a really good job this season in showing out in challenges a lot more, right? And being yeah. a better challenge competitor. We already know the social game is there. Social game is jokes. We already talk about the benefits of her confessionals and how funny it is yeah. all the time, how much we enjoy the one-liners. Yep. We know that side of the game's there. But to be able to do that challenge, that challenge looked hard. Yeah. Right? 
I, uh, difficult. Very difficult. difficult. Um, I would already rate her as one of the best political players in the game right now. Like, in my mind, Johnny Bananas, although, as we've discussed episode after episode, he's lost a step because his power base has faded mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as he gets older. Devin, I think, is up there. Mm -hmm. I think Cam has been showing us something. But then I've got to say Marie. Marie and Cam are neck and neck. Here's and the thing. maybe, I, you know what? No, I'm sorry. Marie is higher than Cam and probably higher than Devin. It seems like she's more proactive in the house than Devin. Here's the thing, right? With the social game, it's so important because what, what ends up happening is you have people who you're afraid of, right? Because yeah. you don't want to go against them in eliminations, this, that, and the third. But what happens is with the social game, Kara, she was right. Kara and her should have been, uh, uh, they should have been more of a threat because Kara is one of the better female competitors in the house. Yep. So you would have thought that while people were going at whoever they thought the team layups were mm -hmm. early on, you would have thought that, okay, well, Kara's a difficult player, but she's with Marie. Marie's going to drag her down so much. Let's throw them in. Yep. But that didn't happen, and I think it's because of the political game. Yeah. And one thing that they were able to do really well is, despite the fact that they were on opposite sides of the house in terms of their partnership, they were able to play both sides of the house or make yourself seem valuable to both sides of the house, which is a super, super important thing to be able to get done. Yeah. Right? Because... You know that there's, you know, you make yourself valuable to Johnny Bananas' side, you mm -hmm. make yourself valuable to the Lavender Lady's side, and that got them to where they are in the game. And undoubtedly, that's more so because of Marie than Kara. Kara's not really playing a political game. No. She's going to rely more on her challenge competitions and her alliance that's already made with Bananas. Yeah, and I, I mean, this is all hypothetical. Mm -hmm. We'll never know, but... I think Kara was thrown off by the Kyle Polly drama. For sure. And I think it affected her performance in the physical competitions. And if she hadn't been distracted, and that's not to run down Kara. Like, I understand where Kara's coming from. Mm -hmm. But if she had her head screwed on right, their team would be even more dangerous. And, hey, they're in the house. Like, yeah, there's yeah, yeah. seven teams in the main house right now. Uh, two teams got eliminated this week, Zach and Amanda and Davon and Jose. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're, the momentum has swung back to Johnny Banana's alliance. Uh, because, obviously, Kara, at this point, the lines are firmly drawn. Kara and Marie are firmly with Bananas and Tony. And you got to think that Polly and Natalie probably are, too. Yeah. It's at least the way things were left at the end of that episode. It sounds like now you've got a, a team of three. The Team Young Bucks and Lavender Ladies still outnumber them, but at least the momentum's with them now. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, we'll see what comes of it. Um, but I, I agree with you. Marie, for me, killed it, not just because she was on our podcast, which I really do appreciate, <laughs> but she really showed up. In yeah. both of the competitions, um, I noted it down in my notebook for the video camera that in the first one, although they lost, I thought she was doing well and meet you in the middle. Like, it wasn't a total disaster. It wasn't a nope. blowout. She was close. It looked like she was maybe one or two cubicles, I guess you'd call That's them. That's just away. a difficult challenge, right? And especially yeah. as they were talking about you're going against, like, again, and the way that she, I'm tiptoeing around it horribly, but... The, Marie mentioned it in the podcast, right? There are just certain things that guys versus girls in certain challenges is going to be more difficult. Yep. And so if you're punching through a wall, a guy doing that is bigger and stronger. Yep. So he's physically going to be able to punch through the walls easier than a mm -hmm. female will. And so they did a good job. Kara and Marie did a good job yep. in that. It's just Nelson and Shane were faster. That's all. That's all. Uh, where can the good people find you on social media? Uh, you can find me on social media on Twitter at Shell Alexander and on Instagram at Sheldon Alexander. And shout out to the people watching the videos on YouTube. Uh, just search, yeah, the challenge or uh, what's this podcast called? You, you killed, killed it. it. That's, <laughs> that's very reassuring, Sheldon. 
That's what just your podcasting search, partner likes to hear. Just search You Killed It, the Challenge Podcast on YouTube, and you can find all our videos for each and every podcast that we do. Um, yeah, good stuff. And you can find me on Instagram and Twitter, at J. Chidley Hill. Mm-hmm. Um, as we've mentioned, this will be the third time the NBA season is starting. We're both NBA fans. Yep. And cover it professionally. Yep. That's uh, okay. So expect a lot of Raptors and NBA talk on all our various social media. Yeah, that's a thing. I will apologize for that ahead of time, but hey. Don't don't apologize. Be true to yourself. It's true. That's what Marie says, right? That's right. That's right. Hey. You got what I was getting at. Uh, and the Raptors begin tomorrow. Yeah, so. Wednesday. Wednesday. By the time people are listening to this, the countdown's on. Yeah, so uh, brace yourself for Raptors and basketball content on top of hockey content and challenge content. Yeah, if you're, like, I know there's a, a lot of Americans that listen to this, so if you're going to get really tired of Raptors tweets and Austin Matthews celebrations and leaf wave emojis, if you follow me on Twitter. <laughs> but I'm not apologizing for any of that because I'm so hyped. One thing we have to talk about before we sign off. Okay. Did you see the tweets that we say house weird? Uh, I did see that. Yes, I did see that. And I, d- I can't hear it. I've tried. I see, don't... I totally forgot about it until this moment, but I was having a long conversation about it at work. And I was, like, trying to figure out house, house. How, now, how, see, now it's in my head, so I don't know what I'm saying. No, but... The Redemption House. Yeah. Isn't that just how you say house? How, how do you we, normally say house? Apparently we emphasize the E. Like, we go, like, house, S- like, we almost break it down into two. House? Yeah, uh, house. I, house? I, I'm, no, I'm, no, no, I got it. I, now it's in my head. I, was it JoJo who tweeted at us about that? I can't remember. I'm gonna. Uh, you're gonna. So. You're gonna tease me about this, but I have too many mentions right now oh! for me to scroll back. Oh! Oh! She tweeted. He or she. I think it was JoJo that tweeted us about that. Uh, that is a name drop, my friend. Okay. No, I think it was Michelle. Sorry, it was Michelle from. Uh, that's the Puerto Rican flag, not Texas. Yes. That's not the Texas flag. Yes. Texas flag is just two solid bars. For sure. I'm up on my flags. It was Michelle and not JoJo. Sorry, my bad. But we do appreciate JoJo uh, tweeting at us as well, as well as my guy 91 Dan Marino as well, hitting us up, telling me I was wrong about something, which I appreciate. Hey, I'm wrong a lot. It happens. And Shane told me off as well at length the other day. Really? Yeah. About what? I missed this. Uh, he tweeted. There was another podcast called "You Killed It" before we came on. Oh with the yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah, tweeted yeah, yeah. at them. Someone added us to be like, "No, Shane, you got to tweet at Jay to the Alexander." Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, "Hey, Shane, what's on your mind?" And he let me have it. Uh, that we <laughs> apparently totally had it wrong about Zach and Amanda. Okay. Uh, and uh, that Zach was selfish, and that he should have backed Amanda, and that Zach is bad. Hold on, like Shane from the show? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's amazing. I did. How did I miss all this? I don't know. That's incredible. I didn't even know that. Uh, so you know. All right. Cool. You know what? Honestly, I got to message him back and invite him on the show because I don't. I like. I do not like to argue on Twitter. Not because I'm scared, but because. <laughs> well, maybe I'm a little scared of Shane, but. <laughs> but because I don't like that you can't hear tone. For and sure. You know this because we've known each other for, God help us, two decades. Yes. Um, but I am a very monotone, sarcastic, have like a dry sense of humor, and I know it does not go over well in <laughs> tweets yeah. or in texts. Yeah, 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 It's the story of my life that people are just like, how could you, like, people always take me at face value mm-hmm. in my tweets, and so I want, if I'm going to get into it with Shane, I want him to hear my voice and understand. No, 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 I got you. It makes I, sense. This is who I am. And that like... Our listeners don't know this, but I try very hard to emote yep. when we're recording, and I'm much more monotone and boring in person, and that I always sound like a bored robot. It's who I am as a person. You know this. Sheldon's laughing, for those of you not watching on YouTube, but it's true. Anyway, we're off on a tangent <laughs> at this point. Again, I get dumb when it gets late. Thank you for listening. Yes. Until next week, this was You Killed It. You Killed it.